so mellow and so melancholy at the same time. What is it? It's a beautiful thing. That is a six chord and a minor six chord in action. And that's what we'll be looking at today on Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. Thank you very much for joining me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is week number five, looking at chord building, number of different types of chords, and how to use these chords. We've covered the major and the minor chords. We've covered the suspended two and four. We've also looked at the dominant seventh, which is very important, and the major seventh and minor seventh, as well as the half diminished seventh, which is really crazy. And we'll talk more about that next week as well. Today, it'll be the sixth chord, not only the what's known as a major sixth chord, but also a minor sixth chord as well. And it's really not as complex as getting into the sevenths, but uh, there are some things you should be aware of, and we will talk about that today. But first, I want to say hello to one of my patrons on Patreon, John Levitt. John, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being a patron. I really, really appreciate you guys hanging on with me uh, through the spring and through the summer of 2020. You've been here with me for a while now, and uh, I know as a musician and as a builder of instruments, uh, it's really wonderful when that support comes from somebody who's doing pretty much what you're doing. So I really, really appreciate you being there, and I've really enjoyed our messaging back and forth on various things and getting very technical with the music. But really, I am very, very appreciative of you being a part of this community of folks that has helped out so greatly during the coronavirus lockdown. All my gigs were canceled, and I didn't know what I was going to do when this thing first broke. But because of Patreon, I've been able to continue producing videos like this, and also recording music, uh, releasing music, creating new tablature, teaching. Uh, it's all been a wonderful, wonderful experience. Thanks to all of you guys out there. I really, really do appreciate it, John. Thank you so much. Now, for those of you who have heard about Patreon and aren't exactly sure what it is, it's just basically a service that allows a number of different artists, creators of all types, to get them to connect with their fan base, with their friends, with the people who want to support them directly without there being anything in the middle. Patreon makes that happen, and it's like the old 17th century um, methodology, that whole idea of supporting those that you uh, appreciate. And then that cyclical thing happens that the artist gets to appreciate these supporters and it's just a big love fest and I really really appreciate everybody who's been a part of this and so I try and give back as much as possible not just in music but in other stuff like t-shirts and stickers and mouse pads and magnets and whatever else it really truly is a magnificent loving wonderful experience and it's just been my motivation for waking up every single morning and doing stuff what can I do for my patrons today. So thank you, John, and thank you to all my patrons out there. And for those of you who want to get plugged in, check out patreon.com slash bingfutch. Go ahead and take a look. Scroll past all the sign-up stuff. Download all that free stuff you see there. And if you think about it, and if it sounds like it might be something that's interesting to you, please do consider becoming a patron like John and over 600 other folks on Patreon. You guys are the bomb. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm just, I'm dressed casual today. I got my warm Christmassy flannels on and my uh, Tron T-shirt and just kind of kind of hang out with you. And uh, let's go over this uh, whole building of the sixth chord. Now, before we go any further, I just want to mention that the sixth chord can refer to a couple of different things. In classical music, the sixth chord can refer to a first inversion. A first inversion is where we take a standard triad with a root, a major third, and a perfect fifth, and we take that major third and we actually put it on the bottom. We make it the lowest pitched note. So the distance between that third and the root is now the distance of a sixth. So in classical music, we would call that a sixth chord. It's referring to a first inversion chord of a triad. But a sixth chord can also be a major triad with a six scale degree added to it, the major six in this case. And we would build that, for example, let's do a, a D major chord. So we have D, F sharp, and A as the root, the major third, and the perfect fifth. So think about the D major scale and what's that sixth note? The sixth note is B. So all we do is we add a B to D, F sharp, and A, and you end up 
with the major sixth chord or a D major sixth chord. Now, as I've mentioned in past uh, episodes, because we're playing three string, generally speaking, there are four string equidistant dulcimer players, but many of us are playing three string. And when we're doing that, when you have a note or a chord rather that has four notes, something's gotta go, something's gotta give. And if you're going to do some of that editing of a chord, try not to get rid of the third and try not to get rid of the seventh if one is present because those two are what happens. We can change those to make the chord very much different. We can go major third interval or a minor third interval from the root. We can go minor seventh interval or major seventh interval from the root. So try to just leave them alone and you can actually get rid of the root, which sounds really weird, or you can get rid of the fifth. And in this case, what we're doing is we're getting rid of the fifth of a major six chord. So we're playing the root, the major third, and then we're adding the six in there. So here's D, there's our root F sharp, here's our major third, and B, there's our major sixth. When you've got all four notes together, it doesn't sound as dark as this. It's got a bit more of a light flavor to it, and that's because we've got the proximity of the perfect fifth, the fifth note of the scale, and the sixth, the sixth note of the scale. That's missing when we take the fifth out, and so it ends up darker. But also, these three notes that we're playing just happen to be three notes that make up E, sorry, that make up B minor. And if you look at this chord shape, that is an inverted B minor, which accounts for some of its minor sounding tendencies there. So it's interesting to note on the mountain dulcimer when we're playing these six chords that basically if we're going to play a D6 and that's taking the place of a D major chord, we're thinking in terms of major chords here, that it is actually an inverted version of the relative minor, which is B minor. To find the relative minor of any key, just start with that major chord, or that major scale, and then go to the sixth note. And that note and the chord built upon it is the relative minor. So the root and the relative minor both share two notes, and that makes them uh, interchangeable. Sometimes you can add drama into a tune by replacing a D with a B minor. So same thing with E, minor and G. Both of those are uh, relative. Same thing with A and F sharp minor. Let's play a G6 right now. So here we have G. Normally this would be G, B, and D. But we're adding an E, which is the sixth note of the scale. So there we have our G6 chord. But if we flip it over, we end up with E minor, which is the relative minor to G major. That's an inharmonic spelling. Two things that sound the same, two notes that sound the same, two chords that sound kind of the same, that have different names, different spellings, but they are the same essential notes and pitches that we're looking at. It's called inharmonic, and you're gonna run into it a lot when you start playing these types of chords on the mountain dulcimer. So G6 and D6. So how would I use um, a six chord? pretty much the same way that you use a major chord, and it gives you a little extra flavor. Sometimes you'll actually maybe accidentally play a six chord uh, because you're playing a chord underneath it, like a G major, but the melody is not part of the chord. It's not one of the chord tones. And so you actually end up building chords like this. And I find that I play G6 in my arrangement of Colors of the Wind. Um, That right there is a G6, because the melody is actually going to the E, but the G major is the underlying chord. So when you start thinking about things like that, it gets very, very interesting to see that many of your favorite tunes already have these built-in chords that are a little bit more sophisticated than just our primary color chords. And uh, so yeah, you can just kind of bring those in whenever you like to, just like you would a major chord. Now let's take a look at the minor six chord. This of course, as its name implies, is gonna be a minor chord that has the sixth scale degree attached to it. And it's got a, a more of a strange sound to it. 
when it's kind of you know it's a haunting longing kind of a sound when we play it on the mountain dulcimer i'm playing three one five which is kind of like a daa chord shape an extended triangle that we're doing here and what we're doing with this is we are omitting the root of the chord and uh, playing the remaining notes. So minor third, perfect fifth, and the six together are going to give us these minor six chords. So there we've got uh, an E minor six. And the way, since you don't have a root, that you can find out what you're playing is you can go down two notes to the root. So from G down to here, down to here, there's E. So there's our E. We have an A minor six. It's going to be right here at six, five, and eight. If you go down two notes, boom, boom, there's your A. And then B minor six is going to be seven, six and a half, nine. And if you go down, boom, boom, two, there's your B. So that shows you with this shape when you're using it, how to find your root if you're not really familiar with the chords just yet. That's some really interesting stuff there, isn't it? Fun, fun stuff. And a minor sixth chord does have the exact same notes as our half diminished seventh chord, another inharmonic spelling. So how would you use something like this? It is a powerful way to make a resolution. It loves to go to the chord below it. For example, we've got our E minor 6 here. Let's go to D. So right next door to D. Look at this, re this resolution that happens here between E minor 6 and D. Ooh, that's nice, isn't it? Notice that in the movement of this minor 6, and the B is the 6 right here, the 6 is going down from B to A. and there's a little bit of shifting happening here. When you get, get those notes going off in different directions and oftentimes going down or up a half step, it's really gonna create tension and release when you move them around like that. Take a look at this one here, or take a listen to this one here. Just gives you a bit of tension before your resolution. B minor six going to A major. A minor six. Going to G, isn't that nice? So it's really sort of a in the middle of a progression kind of a thing that you can put in there. And of course you can invert those chords and, and, and move them into a different shape. And just having that six as your lowest pitch note is going to create some different uh, feelings and emotions. So you can experiment with that. Not the happiest for your fingers. But as we discover with the major and minor seventh chord, sometimes we have to suffer a little bit for our art in order for us to uh, pull some of those colors off of our palette and then paint with them. Very, very simple. There is your sixth chord and your minor sixth chord, how to build them, how to use them. And uh, I want to keep it short and simple because next week's going to get very strange. We'll be talking about the augmented chord, the diminished chord, and a whole bunch of other chords that we didn't even really cover. The theoretical leftovers, if you will, and it's going to be a lot of fun to wrap up this six-week series on chord building and how to use the chords in progressions. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you very much. We'll see you soon.